Welcome to another edition of WVU Extension Today. I'm your host, Zach Harrell. This month, we're gonna bring you something a little bit different. When I'm not hosting this TV show, I am the multimedia specialist for Extension's Family Nutrition Program. We provide a variety of programs all over West Virginia dedicated to helping people eat better and get more physical activity. One of those programs is called Pharmacy. That's F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. It's for people with chronic health conditions like diabetes, heart disease, that kind of thing. And they get prescriptions from their doctors for weekly boxes of farm fresh produce grown by West Virginia farmers. Thanks to a generous grant from the Walmart Foundation, we've been able to expand that program into 10 counties around the state. In summer 2021, I started to travel around to some of those programs to meet our participants and tell their stories. We've now compiled that footage into a short documentary, which you're about to see. So without further ado, here is the world premiere of Pharmacy, a prescription for health. My name is uh, Dr. Carol Antonelli Greco. I am a family physician here in Wheeling, West Virginia, and I am the founder of the Pharmacy West Virginia Prescriptions for Produce program. West Virginia has the worst health statistics in, in the country. Um, we are the worst as far as diabetes, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. At that point, we realized you've got to go to the basics. The basics are learning about nutrition and also learning how to cook healthy food and that's where we came up with this program. So back in 2016 uh, we had a pilot program here at Wheeling HealthRight um, and that was in collaboration with Grow Ohio Valley which is our local urban farming group. That prescription that they had for the produce went to the farmer and the farmer took the produce uh, prescription and then that exchange happened. Um, and that worked just so well, it was beautiful. We contacted Molly Poffenberger, who is uh, the Marshall County representative, and she was you know, on the ground with us in 2016. She would provide um, education during the produce pickup. She would provide um, you know, written materials and recipes for the patients. She would talk to the patients and actually um, uh, do, do a recipe. She would either do you know, something like salsa or something that was actually doable on the ground during the pickup um, and educate people one-on-one -on -one as they came through. That was the way the program was designed. And this week's recipe is um, stuff it. It's always really surprising to me what's in the box every week because I never know what I'm getting. I've never had uh, fresh grown carrots and they're so much better. Oh my gosh, they're just unreal. <laughs> is anybody home? You got some cool air coming from out that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm in stage four kidney disease. And I'm on a transplant list at UK. 
and been on it for four years now. They didn't have, uh, his dad would go out and kill a deer. And then when they killed the deer. He knew that I had all these health problems. And he told me that uh, it would probably be a, a good fit for me. And be worth trying anyways. Um, so different kinds of things with the food labels to be aware of and different kinds of equivalents that'll go through. And then I put in a meat thermometer, and not a meat thermometer, a fridge thermometer, and one of these. I, have, I think this is very, very handy. I love this. To me too, coming over here every week and getting on them scales and blood pressure, you're, you're kind of held accountable. You've done great. You, I just checked. You started out like 232 and you're down to 238. 238, I think. Oh, maybe, because it was like a couple weeks in. That's awesome. You know, I, I take what I take what's in that box, I'll do it today, and separate it and make it last, put it in every meal for the whole week. It's just unbelievable the results that you get. Have a good week. All right. We'll see you next week. Hopefully we're good next week, too. Yeah, you're doing, you're killing it, man. It was tough for me to see that CSA version of it because it's really so important that a patient have autonomy in choosing vegetables. We don't want it to look like a handout. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to put the stuff in. Yeah. So setting a pharmacy program up um, to resemble an actual farmer's market where people can come and choose the foods um, that they want really you know, gives, gives a couple of things. It provides people with dignity of choice, which of course we all want in our food. We all want to um, be able to purchase um, and, and receive the food that we want, that we want to cook and that we want to enjoy for, with our families. And it also gets them to engage. Um, we, you know, with the produce, it gets them, you know, they can pick it up, they can look at it, um, and they can choose. And if the farmer is present, it gives them a chance to interact with the farmer too. And so it's all, it's all part of a system of, of interaction and support and encouragement for the patients who are enrolled. But I cook all this stuff. Do you? I love making these recipes. Oh, that's awesome. Do I lost cook? like 40 some pounds and I cut down on my sugar. And do you they feel, took me off my mask. Do you feel like this program helps you keep your diabetes under better control? Mm -hmm. Yep. We got you. Nice to meet you, Patricia. Thanks. Control their chronic disease, whether or not it's heart disease, diabetes, you know, whatever it is, by their diet. But they do need to be empowered. And the empowerment in this program is access, but also the education that goes along with that. Um, we use a curriculum called Eating Smart, Being Active, and really what that does is that it, it um, increases confidence in their own ability to prepare healthy meals for their family. It allows them to see the recipes being prepared using the produce that they received from the pharmacy program, um, and then allows them to go home and, and recreate that meal at home. So it's a, it's a great way to kind of marry um, the, the fresh produce and the support that they're getting from their clinic um, with, some, with some education and some uh, culinary instruction as well so that they can understand um, why the fresh produce is really good for them but also how to prepare it. So there's a socialization process that happens and there's a therapy session that happens and you know it's, it's, um, it's wonderful because it, you know, it, everyone supports everyone else. Patients have to have a trusting relationship with the people that are providing care for them and whether it's you know their diabetic care or whether it's their healthy food care you know they have to have a relationship with that person you've heard the word do that to taste this if you hi i'm vicki fertig with the west virginia university extension service family nutrition program the fact that the farmers are here <laughs> on site is invaluable uh, the information that they can share I know nutrition and I can teach you what you need to know, but they grow it 
they know what kind of soil, how it's been fed, how to utilize it, what recipes. They can provide so much more information than I can. This is a win-win situation all the way around, from the farmer to the educators to the dietitians to the patients to the physicians and the clinics, the community. It's all interconnected. We want to be able to help the farmers, farmers and the growers in the state of West Virginia scale up so that they can provide the produce um, that will be needed for this program. And if they can be guaranteed an income, uh, with this program, we will see that happen. Okay, I want to show you about um, rosemary and sage. And let me show you where it is and how to do it. This is a very small scale farm, um, intensive growing. We have a wide, diverse um, crop selection. We grow year around. It's all the things that are unheard of because the focus is community. This is every farmer's dream. You've got farmer to consumer week after week after week. So you make a relationship and you are living this with them. And I find myself harvesting based on what they want. The, it's, the, it's the personal, you know. They know their farmer, I know who I'm feeding. And we have an S on the end of farms because of our partnering farms. It's a group of farms that I'm just real uh, proud of. They're even smaller than us, a lot of them. And so with using our path, to the people, you know, we've got the delivery vehicles. We can pull everybody together and everybody can sell their produce. It's tough to make a, a dime, you know, as a farmer. But when you come together, united we're strong, you know. I've been paid, whether it snows, sleets, hails, rains, or it's blast and sun hot, the sale has been made. It's a guaranteed sale. It's a pre-determined, um, it's a contract. Um, and you don't come by that very often as a farm. The pharmacy uh, program has made us um, step out a little out of our own comfort zone. Um, and it's fun, you know? My goal is to get it in every clinic in the state of West Virginia. It always has been. Um, obviously money and funding are the limiting reagent. <laughs> Being able to incorporate this program into the safety net programs that already exist, you know, those being Medicaid, Medicare, WIC, would be a way to do it. There are funds available in those programs that can be allocated for this program. Um, and that's what we're, that's what our goal is. County is a textbook definition of a food desert. I mean, uh, a lot of places all they have is a dollar store. Like, I mean, we have one grocery store in Mingo County and it's in Gilbert. Um, and the rest, it's the dollar stores that they have to depend on, or gas stations. It's, I don't know, it's, it's been very eye-opening doing this job, it really is. You really don't know what people 
deal with until you meet them where they're at, I don't think. He's done so well, he really has. He has been like the star. Uh, I have, I never expected anybody to be so receptive about it, but if you have it in your mind that you're wanting to be healthy and you're wanting to make these changes, then it really shows. Every week his blood pressure's better, his kidney function's been better, and man, it's hard to believe that just from a box of food. He's lost 30 pounds in 15 weeks. That's amazing. Oh yeah, we got some tomatoes, pepper. I deliver Swiss chard I've never even seen it before. I, and actually, whenever we eat it, we didn't know what it was. But still, whatever was in his box, we eat, right. you know. So we tried it. Um, he and I were talking last week. He's like, you know, I haven't felt like I've made any huge changes. It's just been a little thing here and a little thing there. And I think really that's what counts. So those, all those little things come together and make uh, a pretty sustainable lifestyle instead of being feeling like, oh, I'm on a diet and I have to cut all this out and cut this out and I can't eat anything because that's just setting yourself up for failure pretty much. Before this program started, we used to spend most of our time down this candy aisle and down the chip aisle. And we spent most of our money down these two aisles. And now we rarely go down these aisles um, since this program has taught us to eat better and buy better. People say it costs more to, to eat better, but when you minus the money that you spend in just these two aisles, and take it up front to the fresh aisle, you actually save money. Out of all the cheese, the Swiss cheese is lower in fat and lower in soda. <laughs> the frozen one, you get more actually benefits out of it. It's a longer shelf life. do is lay around on the couch but now since we've been eating healthier and we've been getting out trying to exercise walk and we'll play cornhole a lot that just just doing that helps us a lot the and you small, don't really feel like you're on a diet right the small changes that you make uh, just like today it's our grocery shopping that you've seen today is normal for us now before while well, we would have you know, that would have been out of the ordinary for us. At first I said, ah, that ain't gonna work. I've tried, we've tried almost every diet coming and going. Yeah. If, if, if people would just give it a try, like I did. You know, I tried for one week, and if I didn't like it, I didn't have to do it no more. Right. I tried for one week, and that was all. And one week changed my mind on this program. And I, but I thought, well, what's going to happen in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? You know, if I keep this up, what's going to happen? And here it is at the end of the program, you know, and I've lost a lot of weight, and all of my blood work come back normal, and that's never happened since I've had these health problems. So this program right here, like I told you earlier, it saved my life. Food really can be medicine, I think, um, and instead of just throwing a pill at everything. Maybe try this first and see how that goes. You look at the insert on a package insert on a medication. It always says, use this medication if diet and lifestyle changes have not worked. Well, in our medical society, we don't do that first. Um, we showed that, you know, the hemoglobin A1C levels are down at least a half a point, which you know, doesn't sound like much, but uh, when you compare that to diabetic drugs and how much they say they're going to lower hemoglobin A1C, it's right up there along with medication. So that plus we lowered the uh, lipid profile, the total cholesterol, by about eight points. 
Um, and again, when you think about what we did, we didn't do anything other than put produce in the home, you know, gave it to people that may not have been able to afford it, or absolutely could not afford it, and didn't have access to it, and then taught them how to use it and taught them why it was important to eat it. So that's all we did. Samantha Sholley of Rosaska, and I'm in the Office of Health Services Research in the WVU School of Public Health. What we look at is um, data that's collected um, at the beginning of the program, at the end of the program, and along the way. Um, so examples of that could be um, weight, it could be A1C, um, cholesterol values, and then also a lot of survey data is collected behind the scenes along with attendance. We've actually created a standardized process so that the data can be collected in one system. We have standardized forms across the state that folks use. Um, in the past, it was collected on spreadsheets or paper copies and then translated into an electronic system. This way allows for them to run direct reports and help them to advocate for funding across the state. So when we bring all of those different county level data together, we're able to see a bigger picture in the impact. Okay, so this is a um, data brief that we completed through our office um, for the pharmacy program and the Walmart Foundation implementation. A lot of this work goes into um, showing the findings in a way that makes sense. We're able to show on the map where those counties are located and then we're also able to get in the weeds of the um, survey data that we had. So we were able to see that the consumption of fruits and vegetables um, had increased over time. So they were actually utilizing the food. Um, we've been able to utilize the data um, and make um, data briefs and policy briefs to start advocating um, for this program as a whole um, to be regularly funded. So this one is a um, policy brief. So we were able to take the data and then really start interpreting it. What does that mean in terms of the evidence of the data and bringing that forward in a more policy language so that we can meet the partners where they're at in terms of showing the success of the program and where we're going with it. You know, with a lot of work we've done over the years, um, what we've noticed is, you know, there's really great programs, people are doing really great work, um, but if you don't have the health outcomes to show for it, you know, we don't really know of its impact. And we're able to see the impact at a population level when this data is collected and we're able to make things better across the board. Surely you see why we're so proud of the pharmacy program. If you want to find out more about pharmacy and the other programs that FMP provides, visit extension.wvu.edu FMP. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of WVU Extension Today. We'll see you next month.